This is We The Sales Engineers Podcast, show 195. Welcome to We The SES Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. What's up, SE Nation? Welcome back to another episode. My name is Ramsey Majaba, and I am your host, in case you're wondering why I'm here. <clears throat> Last week, we had an interview with Damien Hanna, who is an SE leader at Citrix, and he's been in that job for a very long time, or at least longer than most And today's interview was with an SE leader, a director as well, who's been on the job for two months from the time of the recording of the episode, so which is almost a month ago. So he's probably been on the job for three months. I don't know if you want to count the holidays as a actual work month. Anyways, and I'm noticing a common thread between all great SE leaders. I mean, Damien talked about last week. Uh, Derek, by the way, the person we're talking to, the manager we're talking to is Derek Young. He talks he has the same philosophy that we're talking about people it's leading people it's not leading numbers which a lot of companies end up doing management by numbers and the great se leaders don't do that so i'm I'm trying to get the perspective and i want to get the perspective of someone who's new to a role and the challenges that they face as a new se leader not wanting to be a bull in a china shop or whatever challenges they run into So we talk about a lot of different things. We talk about Lola, and if you don't know what that is, you should listen to the podcast and we'll explain it. Um, We talk about the campfire rule as well. So I think it's best that we just jump into the show. Mr. Young, how are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm doing well. This felt too formal as Mr. Young. Derek. Okay, we'll go with that. (laughs) It's all good. Uh, I've responded to worse before, so it's okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, I've never been called Derek or Young. I don't think that those are worse, but, you know, I've been called Grizzly or uh, that thing. So, (laughs) all right. Welcome to the show. This is the first time you're on the show. Yeah. For those of, for the people listening, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Yeah. So my name is Derek Young. I uh, currently serve as the Worldwide Director of Sales Engineering at Stack Overflow. Um, And if if it's surprising to you that Stack Overflow has something to sell, you're probably not the first person to have that reaction. That was certainly my reaction as I was going through the recruiting process. I'm I'm looking at Stack Overflow. Like When you look at their website, well, first off, if you're learning any type of coding or anything like that, it shows up as one of the searches for any questions you may have. So yeah, like. at, at no point did I think that, oh, Stack Overflow is actually a company that sells stuff. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so the, here's an interesting question. How do you as a sales team overcome that thought? Like if, if a salesperson calls in or SE is brought into a deal, wouldn't the customer be confused to what you guys are doing there? Yeah, I mean, initially that's how it goes a lot of times. But the thing is, is that the the public website has been around for so long. Uh, it's like one of the top 50 most popular sites in the world. Something like 80, 85% of the world's developers visit every week. So everybody pretty much knows about it. And when you kind of give the pitch of, hey, by the way, you know, we sell a private instance of the public site that your teams know and love. Wouldn't it be great if you could, you know, section off your own sort of knowledge and build a community around that? They're usually pretty receptive. It's just we have a little bit of a, a market awareness that we need to build. Okay. And is this a new thing? Like, or it's been around for a while? <laughs> so it's been around for like three or four years. Okay. Um, and the business is actually really healthy for, for you know, something that is, is somewhat unknown, right? And I kind of lead off with that because my reaction was, Stack, wait, you guys sell thing? That seems to be your reaction. Every candidate I interview has the same sort of reaction. Um, but the business is actually doing very, very well. And um, yeah, we just got to uh, try to help it. It's funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm, all, like, I'm kind of multitasking. and Well, not that I believe in multitasking. But it was founded in 2008. So it's been around for a while, but just the public form, I guess. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And so the, the, the piece we uh, sell is called Stack Overflow for Teams. That's the... The uh, basically allowing businesses or or teams to create their own private instance of Stack Overflow. Uh, um, this is not a commercial for Stack Overflow, but <laughs> you know, it's interesting, like a uh, case study where something was la- launched in two thousand eight as uh, like a freeware, I guess, sort of, 
and or at least maybe business to consumer yeah uh, something, something like that i mean it's it's a community right so yeah. you know it's it, the 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 public side is all about smart people who want to help other people solve problems and and do it in an interesting way where there's gamification reputation and points and moderation and subject matter experts and um all sorts of interesting things like that and and we've taken the same spirit and tried to create a a private version of that that we call teams nice so yeah um, it's been around for a long time and now it's been i guess productized for b2b yep. uh, so yeah i guess that's that's a different kind of challenge that you have over there but you already mentioned that you're just, you just you there's a pitch to uh, overcome that yeah yeah i mean look awareness is you know awareness of what we sell is definitely uh, a hurdle but the thing is is that pretty much everybody is dealing with this problem in one way or another right there's no shortage of information there's no shortage of discussions that are happening there's no shortage of docs and slides and whatever else and what typically happens is that people have they've, they've grown and sort of built a hodgepodge of solutions and maybe it's Slack or Teams or Confluence or Google Drive or Box or I don't even know what else, like something homegrown. The problem is, is that it starts to create silos. And then once you have those silos, people aren't as efficient to be able to answer their questions or find things or figure out how to get from point A to point B in the workflow they're trying to accomplish. It's, it's funny. My company uses all of those that you just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, pretty And yeah. I have no idea where to find something. Like yeah. To, some are, some are on the VPN, some are off the VPN, and you're if you're off the VPN, you need to jump on the VPN to find some. Yeah. So, all right, I get that. And how long have you been at Stack Overflow now? Uh, a whopping two whole months. Wow. And you are the global sales engineer director. Or yeah, yeah. I have a responsibility over the global team. So. We've got eight, eight folks on the team right now, seven in the U.S., one in, uh, in London, and okay. obviously we're, we're trying to grow. So where were you before Stack Overflow? Were you in the same role? I guess that's what I'm... Yeah, I, I was. I was uh, at a company called uh, Quantum Metric and helped to grow that business from uh, you know, less than 20 people to 375 employees, um, you know, some many millions of, in revenue. And, um, you know, a, a fairly large uh, uh, SE team distributed across the globe. Okay. So you've built a small team into a large team. Right. Yeah. And now you're back to trying to do the same uh, somewhere else. Yeah. Similar, but it's, it's, it's an interesting challenge this time, right? Cause I'm, I'm inheriting a team, um, you know, inheriting a already very successful go-to-market approach, um, and inheriting, uh, an established product. And, and so, um, as with anything in life, there's always room for improvement. So I'm just trying to trying to focus my time and effort right now on what can I do to add value and what can I do to you know, make things a little bit better for, for the team, for sales, for the company. So you didn't inherit a team in, the, in your previous organization? Uh, there were a couple of people uh, on board before when I joined, but really, you know, most of the people who were in the SC role when I left, uh, I had played a, a hand in hiring in and, and coaching and mentoring and helping them to grow. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times we feel like, hey, we, we've accomplished something huge. We're like, it's my baby. This pre-sales team is my baby. I just built this. Yeah. How did you come to the decision? Like, okay, now it's time for a different challenge. Yeah, look, I mean, that's, that, that, was, that was not an easy decision to make. Um, but in, in the end, I, uh, at the prior company, uh, I spent about four years there. So I had, I had a good run, a good long run. Um, and we were starting to get to the point where it was less about building and more about scaling, you know, uh, or, or, or maintaining. Right. And, uh, you know, I had to, I had to look at myself and, you know, think like, what do I really enjoy? Is it, is it spreadsheets and Salesforce, or is it just like the chaos of building something and just and trying to make it work. And it's, it's honestly the chaos of the building. Um, yeah. And then in the end, right, so the point of like building the team and growing folks up, uh, yeah, the way I started to think of it was like, uh, have you ever heard of the campsite rule? Like going out, like when you're actually camping? No. Uh, so, 
so this idea is that like if you go out camping somewhere to a park or you know forest or whatever it is the campsite you go to you you want to leave it in better shape than how you found it right yeah. so you want to pick up trash and you know, make sure you bury your coals and whatever clean the stream what whatever it happens to be you want to leave it in a in a better spot than how you found it and so i try to take i try to think about my time uh through that lens and you know walking out i could absolutely hold my head high and be able to say that yeah i'm i'm leaving the sc team and the sales org and the company in better shape than how i found it and i absolutely played a part in in you know helping to improve things okay so when you start in either company what is the first like, what is the first thing on your mind to help you achieve the goal of leaving it better than you found it uh well so i mean i'll, I'll start right here with uh, with stack overflow because that's that's the most recent right but it's um so my 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 number one focus here is where can i add value and for the first couple quarters at least my number one customer you know by a long margin is going to be my se team right there so starting early um you know first couple of weeks even at stack overflow it was about hey I'm, i want to have conversations with every single person on the team hey i want to get to know you so let's let that was really the first conversation who are you where did you come from what do you like <laughs> what what's your family situation what do you do for fun like let's start to build a relationship uh and then subsequent conversations were more about like okay well let's let's talk about what's working here and what's not working Right. And this is, and I, and I told someone like, listen, this is your, this is your opportunity to let it rip. All right. This, you're not going to be labeled a complainer, but I, you know, I, I want to hear the good, the bad, and the very ugly. Right. And so through that, tried to take notes and find themes and, and, and figure out, so what's the hit list to go after and start to prioritize that and think like, okay, well, what, what can I make a near-term impact on? What's, what sort of medium, what's long-term? and just go from there. Yeah. So how, what does it help? Like I, I talk to many managers and not many people know, they, they may know I have children. They don't know what their names are. They don't know what they do. They don't know what's going on in my life. How does it help that you would know? Like what would it help? I don't care if my manager knows all this information. Maybe I would if they did, I don't know. <laughs> but what, how does it help the organization in the end? that you know this information? How does it help? I, don't, I mean, man, that's, that's a good one. Like, so, so in, in general, my approach with leadership and, and management, it's, it's a personal one, right? Because the, the people on the team, they're not robots, right? They're not cogs in a machine. They're, they're people with their own set of you know, challenges and, and aspirations and frustrations and complications and whatever the heck else comes with the package. And uh, I just think that in general, getting to know somebody helps me to better relate to them, right? Helps me to better, I, I could be a better manager. Um, I could be a better mentor. I could be a better uh, sounding board, right? Because if I can start to learn how this person approaches problems and situations and how they think and all that sort of stuff, and I can I can adapt my response better, right? As opposed to trying to take a one one size fits all uh, cookie cutter type of response. Um, and so, as an example, some of the things that we're starting to do now is I'm trying to trying to bring people into strategic projects and strategic initiatives that align with some of their interests and, and align with some of the things they want to achieve and and align with some of the things they don't want to do, right? So stay away from that. But I wouldn't have known unless I'd asked. Right. So you're giving them the chance to either prove themselves that they're good at something or find out that they don't like something. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the above. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So in, in one of my jobs, a manager got promoted to director and he hired a manager underneath them. And that manager kind of did what you were saying, where he's trying to understand the people. And I was friends with the director. And one of the director's complaints was, He's spending too much time learning about the people and not enough time learning about the business or like the customers or what we saw sure. and all that. 
how do you balance first off do you think that view is correct like should you be focusing on one thing over another or how how do you balance i don't know i think both? You did both yeah I, I i did both at the same time it wasn't it wasn't either or right there's you know there's plenty of time in the day to learn the business as well as uh, learn the team learn the people um and kind of my my approach with with all of this so i, I actually got kind of lucky because i started right around the time that we did uh the, the team was doing uh, qbrs so the quarterly business reviews yeah. so i got i got to hear a lot about the business okay right? so that that was a nice little uh a little layup for me um but i started to think about this in terms of of uh, and i think we talked about this, like, like this little acronym lola right yeah. let's listen observe learn assess um when i was talking to one of my uh se mentors before starting this just kind of asking him about what he thought and the approach you know he helped me realize that i don't want to come in with the approach of like a bull in a china shop just throwing stuff around ah get out of here this is how i did it yeah this worked for me in the past and and that kind of thing because they have an established process and it's working like things are working so i don't want to be the guy who comes in and clears off the table and then all of a sudden what was working is now busted right that doesn't that doesn't make any sense so if i can come in and and listen observe learn assess and sort of gather the information about well both the people and the business uh then that puts me in a situation where i can start to make informed decisions and you know hopefully not break too much in the process do you ask your people for feedback about if something went wrong or something went right like about you if you did something wrong or right uh yeah yeah i absolutely have in the past so here's one thing that i've seen uh, we've we have a manager that does that and some of the colleagues that i talk to say oh this guy's insecure he's always asking for feedback but but in my mind it's like he's trying to learn trying to get better i don't know why asking questions is a bad thing now like he's asking your opinion because you're important to them why are yeah. you, why is it why do you think that view is And um, maybe more importantly, how do you not lose the confidence of your people? Yeah, yeah. Honest, honestly, I think I think maybe th that individual is coming from a position of insecurity. Um, but in general, I believe I am a huge proponent of a feedback culture, right? And it gets into kind of this idea of just continuously learning, continuously improving, continuously trying to uh, up your game and find new ways to be better and more efficient and uh, just improve in whatever that might be. And if there's something that I'm doing that's not working, that's not resonating, that's, that's somehow whatever, uh, introducing friction into the system, I absolutely wanna know about that. Uh, I don't want people to come over and you know, drop a bunch of F-bombs and tell me how stupid I am, but like if we can have a productive conversation about like why something is or isn't working, that's useful. So let's say your people are listening to this show. I don't know if they are, maybe you will advertise it, maybe you won't. Maybe, huh? <laughs> but if, uh, if they're having issues, there's a big like, power dynamic between managers and SEs or individuals, no matter what company and what role they're playing. And individuals, unless they're senior and they know what they're doing and they're confident in their abilities, they have a hard time talking to their managers. What advice would you give SEs or even like people in general, people who work at McDonald's, how can they talk to their manager about things that they see are going wrong and give advice or give feedback on how things could go better. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta, we, you, you gotta start from a position of trust too, right? And, and, and a big part of that is integrity. So part of that means that I have to live by my word. So as an example, it would not help in this situation if somebody gave me feedback and I was like, I hate what you did, that's terrible and you're stupid, right? Like that's, don't, we, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong thing. And so, so you have to start with a position of trust and integrity and then just, just take the leap. And what I'll find is that a lot of times um, I, I want to, to extend the olive branch and show that, hey, having, having this level of vulnerability is okay. Let me show you how I do it and, and you can uh, model it back to me. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just trying to decipher 
not decipher you you it was very clear just trying to think about that um so and look and if they're still not getting it if, it, if it's still not um i don't know somebody still doesn't feel like they can they can speak up I mean, start having those hard hard conversations have the have the difficult conversation right have the have the tough one before it becomes a deal breaker but how would like as a manager how would you know that this person is having a hard time talking to you versus content because I don't know. They, they could look the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. If you, if you, if you find out, let me know. All right. Uh, the, the, w- the way I've overcome it and I'm not a manager is my, like a leader helping the manager, like SE leads within the team working, yeah, yeah. like building relationships. I guess that's a good, a good task of leadership in the future, build relationships and they get that information. And they don't rat them that person out, but they would tell them right. this person needs some loving or whatever. And that's what's worked for for us in the past. I don't know how yeah, much. Yeah, I, th- I think that's right. fantastic, right? Have have sort of like a trusted intermediary. Um, you know, another way too, and this is this is new here at Stack Overflow. But we have uh, I forget I forget the software, but it's basically every week or two weeks or something like that there's an anonymous survey that goes out to try to ask a few different questions to get, you know, get a finger on the pulse of the team. And then I get a report every, I don't know, month or so uh, to say, hey, this is how folks are doing. So, so that's another way to go about it. Um, but in the, in the end, like, I wanna build that culture of feedback and, and you know, have the trust there so that people do feel like they can come in and have those conversations. I've even had conversations in the past with folks where they say, you know what, I'm just kind of struggling. I'm not really sure if this is the right role for me. Say, hey, let's talk about what you do want and I'll help you move to the next step. But okay, so here's the fear that a lot of people would have is I tell you, I don't know if I'm right for this role. And you're like, eh, all right, maybe we should find somebody else instead of you versus let's help you find what you want. And then I'll worry about hiring somebody else to replace you. I, 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 I totally understand where somebody can come from with that. Um, you know, that's not, that's not my style. Like I've, I've, I've literally had conversations with, with, with people where I'm like, hey, if your heart's not in this, if you feel like you'd be better served somewhere else, let's figure out where that is and we'll find a way for you to gracefully transition. Otherwise, they'd have to leave the company. So it's in yeah, everyone's exactly. best interest. Yeah, exactly. And, and if somebody wants to leave, like, hey, it's, it's, a, it's a free market, right? This, you know, there are no indentured servants on the team, right? So. Yeah. So in, in, in your experience, you've built one team from almost scratch versus now inheriting a team. What are the pros and cons of the different pieces, like having those different two experiences? Which one was easier or, you know, what, what can you share about that? Uh, they're, they're, it's, 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 I mean, any, anytime you're growing a building, it's difficult, but in different ways, I think. Um, you know, any, anytime you're starting from scratch or nearly so everything is being figured out, right? You have a big blank canvas, which is exciting, but also daunting and a boatload of work. Yeah. (laughs) So, so you gotta, you gotta really like, that's, that's a lot. That is a big mountain to climb. Um, you even, and it gets down to things as simple as, I don't know, how do you, how do you recruit? Right when you're first starting out, who do you recruit? Where do you go after? What's your profile? Uh, how much are you going to pay? Like, like all these things that that a, a more established company uh, generally has figured out. You know, not you know, not even to to mention the you know sales, go to market, motion, all that stuff. And so inheriting a team, it's a little, it's different, right? Because again, my my philosophy is I don't want to be the bull in the china shop. Like ah, that sucks. That sucks. That sucks. Oh, okay, hold on. Like, <laughs> but let's try to find incremental improvement. Let's try to find ways where we can um, either directly add value through something that's very clear, or try little experiments. Yeah. Like, hey, what? Like, oh, that's a really good idea that you had. Throw it into the next meeting you got. Let's talk about what happens after you're done. That's something I see with a lot of people where this won't work. That's the common. Oh, I don't think this will work. And in my mind, it's like everybody said that about something at some point in the past. Yeah. And if you don't try it out, you will never know. And you're yeah. kind of, it could, it could blow up in your face. So try it on a small deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Or it could be amazing. And you can yes. try it out on bigger deals as you get more confidence in it. But I love the fact that you think everything is an experiment. Yeah, it is. Ab- 
absolutely. And it's like, I was um, uh, uh, working with the sales leader. He had a, he had a great phrase that I, I love, which is that if, if you're not getting better, then you're getting worse. Yes. Right. So, so even if you're staying the same, your competition is getting better. They're finding ways to level up. So by, by proxy, you're actually getting worse. So you have to find ways to continually improve and just try to get better. Try to find little, like what's the 1%? What's the half a percent? What's the one tenth of a percent that you can do that is just a little bit better? And to your point though, it's like, if you don't try, if you don't experiment, if you don't find something new, then all you're gonna do is stay the same. And by proxy, that means you're getting worse. Uh, it's funny you say that. I feel the same way about salaries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as a manager, like, as individual contributors, we have a lot of control. We work with the customers. We get to talk to the customers. Sometimes we're told what to do by this person or that person, but we have a lot of say in how we work with our customers. And as you become a manager, director, as you get away from that, your responsibility is getting bigger. Your quota most likely is also getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and you're losing control. How do you overcome that? How do you make sure that you hit quota? How do you make sure that even though you're losing, how do you overcome the fact that you're losing control? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a big one, right? And there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so, so a couple of things come to mind. It's, uh, it's, it's enablement and analytics, right? So you have to, as a leader, we all have to put our, people in a situation where they have the absolute highest chance to succeed. Like whatever that means, they have the tools, resources, and information necessary to go out and do their job uh, and do it really well. And so, you know, part of this is, you know, if we look at the SC role, it's, it's high. like, how do you demo? How do you demo in different scenarios? Like, what does this mean? What does good look like? And make sure that people have the tools, inform information, and resources to be able to go and, and succeed. Right? How do you do a POC or POV? How do you, um, what does it look like to interact with your reps? Right? That's a huge one. Right? And, and so like all these different dimensions that go into the job, um, as you know, there's a lot more, <laughs> but like all these different dimensions that go into the job, it's like we, we have to be able to give folks the, the stuff they need to succeed. Right? And then on top of that, you have to be able to inspect what you expect. So it comes around with the analytics and whether that's something like, um, you know, just pure metrics driven from Salesforce activity or, you know, uh, data pulled from something like Gong or, you know, self reviews or whatever the heck that is, you know, 360 reviews from reps and sales leaders and stuff like that to try to figure out how are we doing, how well are we doing our jobs? How well is this progressing? And again, this gets back to the culture of feedback too, which is like, if somebody feels like they're they're missing a step, or or if you have um, observations that they're perhaps not doing so well in an area, if you have a safe place, if you have that trust, then you can have that conversation, and it doesn't feel like an attack. It just feels like, hey, we're all playing on a team. We all have a role to play. This part probably could use a little bit of improvement, but don't worry about it. We're going to help you get there. Okay. So. I have some issues with enablement, um, personally. It's not because most of it's done wrong. It's done enablement for sales. Uh, yep. <laughs> and most companies that I've seen have that. Some have SE enablement, but then again, those people who are doing the enablement have not worked with customers or they don't know how to do a proper demo. Unless you get someone like Chris White who comes in for a few days or John Kerr, Peter right, Clark, yep. comes in for a few days, advises the leadership team. How do you build an enablement team that's reflective of your team's needs and done by an expert? And if they're usually experts, that means they're expensive, which is not, some, is not where people want to spend their money on. If someone's that good, they want to send them in front of the customer. So... Um... At, you know, a few companies ago, I worked for a company called App Dynamics, and eventually that company got big enough where they could pull people in from the SC team, not have to worry about holes left behind, backfill, hire, and all that, uh, and then 
you know, they actually had a, a, a distinct enablement group that was you know, built up of prior SCs from the team. That's kind of the ideal state, honestly. And, and they did some fantastic work. Um, companies I've worked at most recently are not that big. <laughs> so the way, that, the way that we have approached this is really through self-service, right? Find people who have, uh, who have openings, who have bandwidth open, stuff like that, and be like, hey, we have a need to be able to achieve X, Y, Z. Uh, say it's a demo script, for example. What do you think? Are you interested in this? And again, this, this gets back to kind of the beginning of the conversation to understand a person's sort of uh, mentality and kind of what they're interested in, what they value. Because if you say, hey, go create training, and the person's like, I hate creating training. It's the most boring thing in the world. Well, I guess nah, that's, that's not going to be a good fit. But if somebody's like, yeah, I love this stuff. It really gets me exciting. Then there you go. The trick with this is that in a really like if you're if you're really firing all cylinders with sales, you're not going to have a lot of slack in the capacity, right? So it can mean that um, things are getting left aside, and and so a lot of times I I've covered that gap either myself or with other managers on the team. Be like, listen, you have a responsibility to your team. We have a need for this. Everybody is booked, but guess what? This is the this is the price of leadership. Let's, we're going to buckle down. Right. And a lot of other companies would say, oh, we're doing well. Let's not worry about that. But as you said, if you're not getting better, you're, you're getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it gets back to this whole thing, right? We ask a lot of our people, right? Especially in sales, right? Because the peaks and the valleys, yeah. right? When you get to the top and you're running whatever it is, five, 10 deals simultaneously, and you're like, oh my gosh, this, I'm like, this is, there's so much... You have to be like, like the person in that peak in that, in that high intense situation needs to be able to know that you as, as a leader and we as a company are invested in them and their success. And that it's not just about like trying to grind you down and get a win. And so this enablement piece with reinvesting back into the team is just one way to show that. And in terms of analytics, I've, I've worked with different companies. Some people have their SEs use uh, Salesforce all the time. Some don't. My former company, they wanted to, they may had competitions about who puts in the most tasks into Salesforce. Okay. And that was easily overcome by someone attaching their email to Salesforce. And every email they sent was sent to Salesforce. <laughs> so it right. was even, like, even to the techies, the hack a solution, right? Yeah. Uh, so how do you over, how do you get analytics that are actually proper and would it be helpful versus just noise? Yeah. Um... And the other, the other dimension there is uh, the, the, the pain in the factor, right? <laughs> like, what's the pain factor to get all this in? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's very tricky. Uh, for a long time at my prior gig, we, um, we basically just used kind of like uh, the reps activity as a proxy which is kind of like, okay, it's fine. It's better than nothing. Uh, we eventually stumbled upon a way where you could use um, a browser plugin and connect it to your, your Gmail calendar and sort of get activities in that way directly into Salesforce, which was pretty, it was, it was pretty good. It wasn't, it wasn't painful at all. Um, and then here we, uh, at Stack Overflow, we just uh, recently signed up with a company called Vivin, which right. is responsible for yeah, a lot of SE efficiency type stuff. So we, uh, yeah, high, high hopes for that, high hopes, but it's still a little in the early stages. Nice. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to learn more about how it goes with, the, with Vivint. Uh, but yeah, all right. Um, I'm looking at our notes. Is there anything else I should have asked you that I haven't yet? Or you wished I would ask you, like you're really excited about talking about? <laughs> um, I mean, I'll just, I guess I'll just... Uh, just Kind of reiterate what we talked about maybe in prior conversations that these last two months at the new gig is it's been a whirlwind i had you know i spent i spent four years at, at the prior company and got to the point where i i pretty much knew everything right like obviously not 100 percent of everything but like i knew all the process i knew who to go to for this i knew how to you know move that thing along i knew all this and this has been a lot of learning and i had i had forgotten how humbling it is to be the new person at a company and like not even know simple stuff. Like how do I get access to this site, right? 
So here, here's an interesting thing. As an SE, as an individual contributor, I have like five other or 10 other individual contributors I can go to. I have my boss I can go to on occasion uh, without like overwhelming them. As a director, who can you turn to for like simple things like that to figure out where you're going next or who to ask questions? Yeah, so, so thankfully the SE team's been fantastic, super helpful. There, there are a couple of people on, on board who have, uh, really gone above and beyond to, to help me close my knowledge gaps. Um, you know, and the other thing is working with the, the other sales leaders as well as my manager, the CRO. Um, and so, so part of what I'm doing though, and this kind of gets back to the campsite rule, is that all the little gaps that I'm finding in my own onboarding knowledge, guess what? I'm documenting them but I'm not just documenting them. I'm documenting them in Stack Overflow for Teams, which is a private knowledge community that we all use internally. And I wish we'd use more. And I am aiming to be the change that I wish to see in the world by pushing all of our SE stuff into the product that we sell. Right. Yeah, it's, it's interesting if a company doesn't use the product that they, which I, I've seen companies, they sell a certain product that they don't use internally. And you know, it's just weird. All right. Yeah. yeah. The problem here is that, again, you take, take like a 12, 13 year old company and we've, um, the private version is not, is, is somewhat young. And so there's a lot of information that we're inheriting that has not yet been migrated and we'll see. Hopefully well, which, which is fine, but at least you're using it and you get to like, if there are any pains that your customers are seeing, you get to see them as well. And now you, you are the, advocate for the customers but that's right i've already you, put in my feature request too yeah so if, but like i've worked with companies where we had equipment to test other equipment but we never used that to test our own stuff right okay. and i'm like but how do we know what the customers are facing oh like we couldn't pay the other department to use a, it was too expensive for them to sell us like it's we're a second like we're a testing tool for them so it was just it would not it was nonsensical basically. Yeah. So it's good to see companies using their own products for, uh, for their own needs as well. All right. It is time to move on to the not so fire round. These are the same four questions I ask almost every guest. I've almost 195 episodes. Uh, so I would love to know what you think about it. So question number one is what do you love about, like, I guess, building teams? What do I love about building teams? Um, I, I, I really do enjoy sort of the chaos and dynamicism of, of growing an org, of, of, a, of a rapidly growing company. Uh, and then I really, I get a lot of, uh, I, I get a lot of personal joy from seeing people grow and develop. Question number two is what would you change about either your role, the sales engineering role, or any anything in the professional setting that you're in? Uh, this is this is more big picture, right? I've 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 heard this say, I've heard this said in a few different areas, but uh, sales engineering is the best job you've never heard of. And I would like to find a way to make it a job that more people hear about. And I think that you're doing it. <laughs> And I think that what you're doing is fantastic, putting the message out there. Uh, the folks over at Presales Collective are fantastic. SC Nation yep. are fantastic, right? Like, like a lot of the tooling and books and, and stuff like that, it's all started building up. So let's, let's keep the momentum flowing. Speaking of books, last question number three. Is there a book or resource you'd recommend for either SEs or someone in your position trying to they can build out an uh, organization, basically? Uh, so, so I'll, I'll recommend two, right? Um, so one sales engineer manager's handbook. Yep. All right. So this is the nuts and bolts of, of SC management. Um, fantastic. I've stolen a lot of good things from there. It's great. And number two is the culture, the culture. code. Yeah. Talking about, uh, building great teams and how, and how, you know, it, it doesn't just happen by accident. Nice. All right. Last question of the not so buy around. Is there a habit that you are working on to improve in your personal or your professional life? 
Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> so since starting the job, my my dedication to my Peloton back there, you can kind of see, yeah. has has definitely slipped off. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not quite what it was uh, before. And so I actually am I'm, I'm starting back on it. I'm going to get back into a regular cadence. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that if we're trying something new, the things that we've been doing for years just slip off? Um, well, for me, it's because I initially, in, in, uh, after starting at Stack Overflow, I was working many hours and I was tired. And it was sort of a deliberate choice of like, okay, I really need to buckle down and focus in this first month month and a half, two months. And that meant sacrificing something else. And so, uh, you know, I chose to sacrifice poor Peloton back there, but uh, you know, it's, it's getting a little love and it'll get a lot more love as we go forward. <laughs> nice, All right, awesome. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Derek. If my audience can help you with anything, what would you ask of them? And where can they reach you to help you with that? Uh, yeah, so LinkedIn is the best way to reach me. Um, I'm very responsive over there. Um, and yeah, if they, if they were to help me, I mean, look, if, if, if anybody out there has, uh, you know, has been in my shoes, trying to, trying to, you know, take an existing team and, and, um, you know, uh, you know, be in a situation where you can add value as a leader and, and all that sort of stuff, I'd love to hear your experiences. And if there's an individual contributor out there who, uh, you know, wants to ask some questions or, you know, figure out what the heck it means to be a great SE or even how to get into the role of SEs. So feel free to reach out to me. LinkedIn's the best way. I just, a question popped in my head right now. Hopefully you're okay if I ask it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so you recently, uh, you're working with Vivin right now. Yep. And they have their own sales team. You're a sales engineer. You're a professional at it. And you usually sell to other people. How different was it to be like sold or to be demoed to or to work with other sales teams who are working like to sell you basically? Uh, you know what it's like? I, I am a very tough buyer. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a lot of patience for nonsense. That's, that's what I realized. Uh, and it wasn't so much that they're nonsense, but it's through, because um, we looked at some other software as well and some other things. And, and uh, I, 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 disqualified some conversations so i'm like you know what i don't have the patience for this we're, we're moving forward nice <laughs> all right good to know well derek thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it and hope to talk yeah. to you again in the future ramsey thanks for having me my pleasure thank you derek for coming on thank you for listening today as well let me know what you think i'm trying to keep the outros as short as possible because i don't want to talk too much and we had a great conversation so let's just leave it at that thank you again and i will see you next time with that this is ramsey signing off